Vijay Lakshmi Trivedi, who is from the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai, India. And um, she brought numerous contributions to cognitive algebra and algebraic geometry on topics like uh, Hilbert Samuel functions, uh, Hilbert cos multiplicities, Frobenius splitting, and uh, more recently introduced the concept of uh, Hilbert cos density function. Uh, with that being said, uh, Professor Trivedi, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Florian, for a kind introduction. And uh, I would like also to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give this talk. So this is the first time actually I'm giving a talk on a pen tap. So please bear with me. Uh, I'll be a little slow. So now today's talk, uh, I'll be talking about the existence of HK multiplicity. And uh, in fact, the proof is pretty self-contained. And all, I'll be following the proof given by Monsky. So before that, let me uh, start with the hypothesis, which I'm going to presume throughout the lecture. So here, R is a local ring with a maximal ideal M and the residue field K. And dimension of R, actually you have seen in various lectures. And of course, the characteristic of uh, R is prime P, which is positive. So, and and M is a finitely generated R module. Now, uh, this you have seen many times before, but just to be very clear, I'll repeat the notation. So, F it e iterated Frobenius denoted by F. This is no sorry, there is no star here right now. Um, mm -hmm. Is the map which is, is endomorphism given by R goes to R to the power P. And uh, this makes, uh, gives the another modulus structure to the uh, R, which is denoted as F lower star R. And the model, I recall the elements of this, this particular ring F lower star E, I'll denote always this for just following the previous talks like this, R, that means it's an element R in R, but it's denoted F lower star E R. And as you know, the multiplication uh, as an R model is given by, suppose R1 is an element of ring R, then F lower star E R is nothing but F lower star E R1 to the power P to the power R into R. So this you have seen many times before, but uh, I'll be repeating it. Similarly, there is a model structure on the model denoted as F lower star M, and everybody's familiar with that. Now, another notation which I'm going to use, this is for a given ideal I, okay. Um, is defined as the set of ideal generated by set of elements X in X to the power Q, um, yeah. This is, uh, I'm sorry, this is total messed up thing. So here it is the set of ideal generated by elements of the type x to the power q, where x belongs to i. So q for me, it always denotes like a power of a prime. So they say p to the power e or p to the power n. So it's very easy to check uh, if i have a generator, given by say elements x1 up to xm, then i to the power i Frobenius q is given by ideal generated by the elements x1 q, xm q. So this also you have seen earlier. Uh, so I'll recall the following theorem of Kunz, which has been actually recalled several times in the past lectures. So, but uh, it's the fundamental theorem, which uh, begins this, I suppose, the study of characteristic P methods for commutative algebra. So here, your R is a Noetherian ring. So note that I'm not saying it's a local ring. It's a Noetherian ring of characteristic P positive. And um, then R is regular
if and only if f uh, lower star e of r is a flat r module. So that is for some e, you can say, for some uh, e greater than one, or for all e greater as an equivalent. So note that this is so very funny. The regularity assumption has nothing to do with characteristic, but it's translated in terms of a Frobenius map. And he's a one. He's the first person, I suppose, uh, one of the our leading ones who realized the importance of. So in this proof, uh, we none of us have proved this theorem, but he, uh, the ingredient, one of the ingredient in this proof is the importance of looking this length function where m is the maximal ideal and relate to the regularity of the ring. So I'm going to state that part of the thing uh, regarding the length function in the next lemma soon. Uh, so before that, <laughs> let me uh, say, uh, make few important remarks. So one of the thing you have noticed uh, in many of the lectures, you require the assumption that R is F finite because you would like F lower star R, which is the model here to be a finite mo R model. You would like to basically would like to stick in a category where the all the models are finitely generated over R. So that assumption was made, of course, uh, Many or most of the general rings do satisfy that. But in this uh, today's setup, actually, we can get by without assuming the uh, F finite assumption. And I'll explain why. So, this is uh, one remark. So, the thing is, what you do, you take R and replace it by replace by another ring S. So, what is the property of this ring? It's, uh, S is complete local. So advantage of R is the equi characteristic thing. So of course, it is contains a field. So if I take, a, for example, completion of R, uh, the it will, it will contain the residue field. That's one thing. And of course, the maximum I, my ideal of R, if I extend to S is going to be the maximal ideal for S. That's the hypothesis. And you can further, you can assume the residue field is algebraically closed. So that you have seen in mass talk also. So for example, if I take a polynomial ring, I complete it, I take a power series ring and I take the algebraic closure. Of course, the uh, taking, replacing power series ring over K, replacing it by K bar over power series ring over K bar is not exactly you are tensoring K bar over K, but you are further taking completion. But nevertheless, that operation is a faithfully flat extension. So R to S is a faithfully flat extension. So basically you're replacing R by another ring S, which is complete local. And it has a maximal ideal generated by the same elements and the residue field is algebraically closed. <clears throat> so that way you have, assume your ring is actually F finite. Okay, wait a minute. So, uh, so, but uh, this uh, doesn't Professor change. Professor Trivedi, in this remark, are you assuming R is local? Oh yeah, my ring is uh, local unless I say that is. Uh, okay, okay. That, okay, okay. So be, this be, and... because previously in, in Kuhn's result, you, oh, no, you, no. Don't, you do not assume so, that R is, is right, local. Right, for the right. reason I am asking. Yeah, yeah. Right. So the I'll assume my ring to be uh, local. Uh, this exactly this hypothesis, unless I mention something okay. additional. So, and, and, and this faithfully flat extension may be regarded as somehow a particular case of, of what is called in Burbaki con Flemon or something like this, right? Or, so, sorry, say, can you repeat again? Yes, in Burbaki there is a construction called Gonflemont in mm -hmm. French, which mm -hmm. more or less is what you are doing here, which okay. you construct a faithfully flat, just in case someone knows what this means. Okay. okay. All right. So here, uh, so why this is sufficient? Yeah. Why can you do this? So because I'm, I'm looking at the length function. So here, um, so let me uh, be careful here because uh, I can't talk of length function. Uh, no. so, so suppose 
I take the ideal i, uh, which is m primary. So it makes sense okay. to talk of length function. So now what happens if I take a length of uh, model m? Though I'm writing this elaborate structure uh, for model m, I'll reduce everything to the ring thing soon. But uh, look at this length. Now suppose I have replaced R by S. So why? Uh, so it doesn't length-wise it doesn't make a difference. Uh, so I'm just writing it here. M mod you take I Frobenius Q M tensor S over R. It's a faithfully flat extension. So I can take this as a M tensor S over R modulo I Q M tensor. R over S. Uh, so I apologize for bad handwriting. This is S. So, so basically, instead of looking at this length, I'll be computing this uh, length over the S. OK, here I already have written it. So, a, so this is actually just now, so already it was written in my file. So. Suppose if I replace R by S, so what I also have is my field is algebraically closed. So look at this length function. This is, so I'm claiming the second one, I mean this one, so this one. So, so I'm saying that this length function, F lower star EM, and I extended ideal is same as length of M mod IQM. So why is it? So this is this is very important uh, equality for us because this we are going to repeatedly use. And uh, so how do I prove this? So look at this one. So you have a f e lower star m uh, i dot f lower star e m f lower star e r as an R module, and this is length of, as an R mod, I can take it R, which is same as taking FK module now, F lower star EK, K is the residue field, remember, and this is K. Now, this one, now once you have gone into Frobenius, so basically, uh, oh, there's one more step, I should write it here. So this is, um, okay, perhaps here I should have changed it. All right, this. So this I can. So here, this one I can write as f lower star e of i Frobenius q m, right? This one always. So now everything is like a module applied Frobenius over it. So it is same thing as length over r m i q m. And this one, this is algebraically closed, so nothing is happening here. The length is one, so this, so this equality is this. What I got. So board work is not very nice here. So this is uh, So let me erase this now. So this is going to be my star two, and. And this uh, I'll be looking at this length function certainly reminds all of us the ordinary length, ordinary power and corresponding length, which is Hilbert Samuel polynomial. So today the aim is to study this length function, this one. Now, so before that, we'll assume this property of this length function. So which is suppose if you have a local ring and I'm primary ideal finitely generated module. So here D1 is a dimension of the model m that's important so length of m mod i and m is the multiplicity plus n plus d1 minus 1 choose d1 and so on so it's a polynomial of degree d1 and all the coefficients are rational so when when you look at looking at this length function uh, you very much would like to have something like this some property so so aim of the talk is to study this so this one Hilbert Samuel polynomial is also telling you something that uh, if I look at just the limit of i n m upon n to the power d and take the limit as n tends to infinity, this does exist with e m i upon d factorial. So 
so we would like to study the length function this one uh, but uh, or at the most can i say something about the limit so before that we come to that why we should be interested uh, let me give a recall the lemma of the kunz since he is the one who started this so it's say suppose if i have a local ring now or uh, dimension of the r is d then length of r of m q frobenius q is greater than q to the power d that's the first one and the second one it says and equality holds if and only if your r is regular so this uh, this can be for all uh, for some e greater than equal to 1 or for all greater greater than equal to 1 it's the same so for e greater than equal to 1 so this is this is the significance of length function you you know the length of length of the r mod frobenius q is the least it implies the ring has a nice property okay so so i this is of course the second part is harder so we'll just look at the easier part just to get a feeling of the this frobenius powers so let us see the first one which is uh, this one we'll prove the second one uh, the proof of the one so here we are looking at the length function so you assume again r is complete and k is k bar without loss of generality <clears throat> and further i can replace r by r mod p a p is a prime ideal which gives a dimension if i replace r by r mod p if at all if if i prove that uh, the length function of this for r mod p is greater than equal to qd then of course it is going to be so for r also so uh, we can assume r is a domain so is this reduction clear that i can assume my r is complete local domain now you have this then what you do you choose elements xt inside maximal ideal giving a minimal reduction so now your r is uh, complete local so it contains a uh, field so i this call this ring to be a or oh, this should be x i suppose uh, x t this ring is contained inside your ring r now i am claiming rank of f lower star e r as an r module is same as rank of a f lower star e a module so why is that so let us see so you look at the map f lower star e a so this is an injective map everything is a domain so frobenius it sits inside the frobenius so and a itself is sitting inside uh, r and r is sitting inside f lower star e r it has to be frobenius now so this is everything is uh, this is finite over this this is finite over this so everything is a uh, finite over a actually okay so if i look at this map and if i look at model like this so rank of this model as a model via this map is same as this one okay but rank of f lower star e over r over this is same as r over a nothing is changing so that means rank of this should be equal to rank of this so that's what it is and 
this is equal to q to the power d. That is easy to check because it's a poly power series ring. In fact, uh, it has a basis. So f lower star e, a has a basis. I think we have seen it before. Uh, is a f lower star e uh, x1 i1 dot 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 f lower star e e x d i d where i j is zero less than or equal to i j s less than q. So we got rank of uh, this module is equal to QD. However, rank of F lower star E as R is uh, certainly, I'm sorry, this is not correct. This, do I want this? Wait a minute. mu of f lower star e. So this the minimal generator of this module as a R module is going to be greater or equal to the rank of f lower star e r. This is just the minimal number of generator of f lower star e r localizing further at the quotient field. So obviously it has to be dropped further and which we have just now seen is equal to q to the t. However, now this one is nothing but uh, by Naka am I using or this thing is F lower star E R. This is, this is R module and which we have proved by our star condition is length of R of uh, MQ. So what we have proved that this is greater than or equal to Q to the the power d. So this is always true. So that was the uh, one thing. So and this part that when equality when actually exactly it is equal to q d implies r is regular. It's a harder and I'm not going to prove. But it tells you something just that looking at the length function tells you about the nature of the ring r. So in fact you could have taken a little cruder invariant uh, and. Uh, and this is what actually we are going to do is the length of R of, uh, in fact, slightly more general form of this modulo Q to the power D where Q is tending to infinity. So he is saying for one Q, the, this equality is equal to one, then your ring is regular. But what about the limit? Uh, maybe it does have some, it uh, tells you something about the ring. And this, in fact, turns out to be the, our candidate for the day. I mean, we are going to study this. And this limit function, in fact, was considered by Kunz, but uh, he thought that this limit doesn't exist. So he dropped, dropped it there. But later, Ramonsky uh, again rediscovered. And in fact, he put this limit exist. And this is what today we are going to follow his proof. And this, so this is our aim of the day is exist. So in fact, we'll prove it for any module and all. And why, by the way, why after so many years, uh, Monsky looked at this, that's another story, we'll come to that later. So let me go to the some, let me set up some notation. So this I think used more in number theory, this party, this kind of notation. Uh, if uh, f and g are two functions, Sorry for the bad handwriting. F and G, I hope you can read this one. Oh, sorry, this is very bad. Then we say Fn is of order uh, G of N. If there is a positive constant such that the norm of F is less than or equal to C into norm of Gn 
for all n. So for all n or for all n positive, it doesn't matter because we are free to choose our c. So okay. So we begin now towards the theorem of Monsky. So first thing, what can you say? First of all, length of the function. So this is uh, what we are going to do. So we'll do it full generality, like Monsky did. He looked at the module and looked at this length. So uh, recall my M is finitely generated and ring is uh, Neutron local ring and I is M primary to make sense of the length. So this function is of order Q to the power dimension of M. This is important. So, so this is actually not very difficult. So what you do, suppose mu of i is given by m elements, then i to the power m q contains i frobenius q for all q. Uh, I mean, it's easy to see, like if I have uh, i given by generator x1 up to xm, then imq will be given by monomials, uh, summation x1, i1, x, I'm sorry, my x keeps turning into capital and a small both actually, im, uh, where summation of ij is equal to mq. So all the ijs cannot be less than q. So one of them has to be greater than or equal to q. And so in particular, it belongs to the q. So So of course, then length of m upon iq m is less than or equal to length of uh, m upon i m q, which is equal to p of m of i of m q where uh, PMQ uh, I have defined as a Hilbert Samuel polynomial for the maximal I, for the here. So here this is. So it's a polynomial degree equal to the dimension of the module. We all know that. So here, uh, so suppose, so this is equal to, suppose um, your PM, PM I of, x is given by something like c0 x to the power d1 plus uh, c1 x to the power d1 minus 1. I'll just write in the simplest form c of d1. Remember d1 is a dimension of m. Then choose your c to be maximum of ci uh, where i is 0 less than i less than d1 multiplied by uh, m is a fixed number. So I can do that uh, to the power d1. So this implies that p m i m q is less than or equal to c into q to the power d1. So that proves the lemma. So are there any questions on that? Okay. So at least we have some bound on the length of this function in terms of the dimension of the module, and that's going to be very important. So all the arguments actually involved here are pretty basic, but uh, you had to just arrange them carefully. So this is uh, my notation. And uh, in fact, I think it's a... Uh, pretty common. So lambda to be the set of all elements, all primes of the spec of R, says that dimension of R mod P is dimension of R. 
Now in the whole game, you'll see the only components of R matters are which are which are the maximal components giving the dimension of the ring. Others one don't matter in the competition uh, in in this limit. So okay, let me see. So this is the first instance of that. So here, suppose you have m and uh, n okay, finite. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. here is a comment uh, that uh, the inclusion should be in the reverse manner. Huh? In what? 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 I think in the previous one. But uh, uh, actually, the first line in the proof. Uh, Uh, one minute, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, tell me. Yeah, uh, the first line in the is the inclusion. Uh, I mean, I think the inclusion should be in oh, the oh. reverse. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, uh, my man, I don't know why I'm getting phone call at this hour. Uh, one minute, this one. Just, I don't know why. It's, I'm sorry. Hello. Yeah. I'm so, I apologize uh, for this. Uh, I'm in my office. I don't know why I'm not getting phone call here. Uh, I, the, is this correct? I am Q contain I provenis Q now? Yeah. That's okay, right? Yes. Uh, other is the second line inequality. Uh, perhaps we will not get. In the next line, the I, th this one, um, this one. This no, one? the second line in, in the proof, uh, the inequality we will get if the uh, inclusion is, I mean, the containment is there. I don't get it. So IQ is a bigger ideal, right? So when I go model a bigger ideal, length will decrease. Is that, did I answer your question? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the correction. Yeah, yeah. So, M and N are finitely generated model. So, such that MP is isomorphic, this isomorphic to NP for all P in a spec of R. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this is. For all P in this. So I'm not asserting that M and N have any map between them, but suppose there is a map uh, when I localize at this uh, minimal, this minimal prime of special type, MP isomorphic to NP, then, I can compare their Frobenius length IQM minus uh, length of N of uh, IQM. Uh, this is of order Q to the power D minus one. So this is saying that if uh, on the maximal dimensional component, uh, modules are same, then their length differs only by a, a smaller number, which is q to the power, a smaller order, which is q to the power d minus one. Okay. So, in fact, this way of reasoning, you have seen it before also, but uh, let me repeat it again. So, you take S to be R minus union of P, where P belongs to lambda. Then S inverse R has uh, only the primes uh, in its uh, spec of S inverse R, only the minimal primes of this. So that means all uh, this ring is an Artinian ring, S inverse R, and uh, where maximal ideals are S inverse P. So it's a product of RP by Chinese remainder theorem. Okay, now what is happening? S inverse M I look at. So, of course, this is going to be product of MP, where P is in lambda, 
which is same as uh, there is an isomorphism for each MP, in fact, into NP, P in lemma, and which is by definition is same as S inverse of N. So using this uh, piece of uh, maximal dimensional component, you have, you have an isomorphism at least at from S inverse M to S inverse N, and it's an S inverse R linear morphism. But uh, we have seen several times this so S that uh, home of uh, M comma N, because it's a, Because M and N both are finitely generated, uh, we can, it will come in with localization and this is what is happening. S inverse M, S inverse N. So you have a map here, so you can, there exists a map here, corresponding map and call that map to be a phi belonging to home I don't know why my pen is doing this actually. So home of M comma N says that S inverse V is psi. Now you look at the map now, which is given by this map V. So this map is telling you that at each uh, prime coming from maximal component, uh, they are isomorphic. So they have no co kernel on those primes. So so in particular, dimension of C equal dimension of the module C is less than or equal to D minus one. Is this okay, this, this part? So now if I look at this one, this function M upon IQ M. So M, you go, you can go from M to M of IQ M by tensoring with R mod IQ. So so tensor is a right exact functor. So I have the sequence C upon IQM, C to zero. So this implies N of IQN, this length is less than or equal to length of m upon iq m plus now c is of dimension less than or equal to c is a module of dimension less than or equal to d minus one so it's this length should grow to the order q to the power dimension c which is less than or equal to d minus one so this similarly i can there is nothing uh, uh, special about ordering M and N. So I can reverse the argument, replace interchanging N and M, and I'll get the same thing. So it will give the theorem, a lemma. <coughs> Is this okay? I'm presuming that I'm not uh, going very fast because I'm writing it very slowly. So it is not possible for me. Yeah, I think it's fine. It's, it's, it's just perfect. It's, uh, what did you say? I think it's just perfect. Okay, just thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Florian. You're very kind. <laughs> so here, so this is a one thing. Now we are approaching the proof into small, small steps. Uh, so, but each of them are actually, some of them are very nice arguments. So you have a short exact sequence. So. I think I already prepared the slide. Uh, okay. Okay. So here, the length of M of IQM is actually equal to length of M prime IQM prime plus length of uh, IQM prime plus order of QD minus one. 
so uh, actually i forgot to uh, mention one thing uh, when i mentioned the hilbert uh, hilbert samuel function so there the one thing was uh, very important uh, in the proof if you remember is uh, you can consider a graded ring the length function because let me just write it here so you want to look at the r mod i n for example for each n so you had a ring structure on this like r mod i direct some i mod i square like this and this graded ring structure has been used to prove the existence of hilbert samuel function if you look at the proof but now if i replace n by frobenius q uh, frobenius n then it is uh, there is no ring structure because simply here like i n into i m there is a multiplication is actually i n plus m but i can't say like that i q into i q prime is equal to something it is that is not correct so this is this is a problem and so we are going through this uh, laborious arguments so okay okay so let's uh, come to the proof so so what you do assume you are just needed a length so i can assume again r is complete k is k bar now suppose r is reduced this is begin with this one so suppose r is reduced then what is happening uh, then s inverse uh, do i need this so uh, it at uh, i don't need perhaps then rp is a field for all p belonging to this thing for any pre minimal prime so you have so when i lo localize this sequence uh, this one at uh, p such a p then it is just a exact sequence of vector spaces over rp so of course they will split and there will be so this kind of isomorphism let me write very 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 m prime p direct sum m p double prime is equal to m p and this is happening for all p in lambda so by previous uh, lemma we have uh, we have the assertion so let me not write it here so we have this thing okay now suppose this is this is very nice argument actually r is not reduced here you are using that and there is an endomorphism given by frobenius this is this is beautiful so suppose r is not reduced then it has a nil radical i will not call it to be a nil radical of r so uh, so there should exist you can always choose a q not large enough say p to the power e not such that and not to the power uh, i mean q not is zero on the other hand if i have any module and i look at its e not f e not m this one and multiply this by this so it is going to be f lower star e of n not of uh, q not into m right means that's the multiplication but n not q not is zero so this is zero so this is telling me if i take e not Enough Professor number Trivedi, of... maybe you need uh, the uh, Q zero between brackets, right? In when when you write there exists uh, Q zero such that n zero uh, raised to the Q zero is zero. Maybe it's Q zero between brackets in order to use no, afterwards. No, no, no. Not necessarily no. between brackets. No. No, it's ordinary Q not. Uh, ordinary power. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But. Um... But maybe you are right. I why I can do this also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. In fact, that's good. thanks. Yeah, I can choose this. Right. So you agree with that, right? So yeah, sure. So this is zero. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So 
this is telling you if I take E naught iterated Frobenius, then your module F lowest E naught annihilated by N naught. So it's an R mod N naught module. I mean, F E naught lower star M is. Now you had a short exact sequence between uh, modules. So remember your Frobenius is exact functor actually. I mean, you're not doing anything here. So it's a F lower star E naught uh, mod R module. It's uh, in particular, it is a R module in particular, since it is annotated by N naught, it's R mod N naught module. So it's an exact sequence of R modules. And hence, R mod N naught module because and not is annihilating all of them. I thought I read. Uh -huh. Here I have written actually already this. Uh, I'm going very slow, in fact. So here actually I have already written to save the time. So here, so you have this exact sequence. I'm writing it as the n prime n and n double prime. So it's a sequence of R mod and not module. So so that means R mod N naught is a reduced ring. So by the previous assertion, when we dealt with the case uh, R is reduced, you can always write length of this thing as kind of additive for the reduced case. So now, but this module, this module is same as if I open it. So perhaps I should write it here. So here, because uh, so this module, is a f lower star e of m uh, i q dot f lower star e m. So when it goes here, so f lower star e m into f lower star e of i q into q naught. So So you got the length function here. So this is same as the length of this here. Now, so this is this m mod q q naught m is equal to this into this plus o q d minus one. So, okay. So, okay. But remember, q q naught uh, d minus one. I mean this same as order of q d minus one. So in fact, uh, you are getting uh, for all q large enough. So for all q greater than or equal to q naught, so you have the additivity of the length function. So, okay. Is it okay, this one? So now we more or less prove the result about the existence of HK multiplicity for the ring. So here I'm assuming R, M, K, Noitran local, but I'm also adding the assumption it's a complete domain. Okay. I'll just explain in a moment why am I suddenly oh, so complete domain. And dimension of R is D, that's important. Then there exists a constant which I, so my I is always M primary if I don't say anything. So R of R I, I said is a greater than one. This actually already I have proved it if you look carefully. I'll just explain again. Such that, here it is.
So first time you, you see that something uh, like a Hilbert Samuel function you have obtained, not quite a polynomial, but up to the lower order. So that's the first thing you have. Okay. So we'll give a proof here. So I say assume k equal to k bar. So here, uh, why didn't I? Why did I assume that is a complete domain? Of course, you without loss of generality, you could have assumed your R is complete and K is K bar. But I cannot. I am not assured of the being a domain property. So I start with a case when R is a complete domain. It's important for me. So now we have already seen, and that's the first uh, lemma we have seen f lower star of uh, r as a rank of this thing is actually p to the power d. In fact, uh, using the power series argument, what we had proved was the thing, if you remember, is actually p to the power e to the power d, actually there's a q to the power d, in fact, we had assumed. So this we know. Now r is a domain. So in what we have is uh, that means so many copies of R of PD are sitting inside F lower star of R. It's, uh, I suppose it's okay, right? Uh, because I'm saying uh, if I have S inverse localized the quotient field, I'll just say it uh, properly, is uh, isomorphic to uh, F lower star R tensor S inverse R or R. Now, this is a domain, this one, so localization doesn't kill anything. So it is sitting inside here, right? So then you can choose a last S and some element in the S such that there is an injective map from here to F lower star A. We are choosing appropriate S here. So you have a map like this. So here you are using as a domain. Okay. So this is isomorphic at the generic at the minimal prime. So if I look at its co-kernel, so dimension of C is less than or equal to D minus one. So that means now additivity of the length function says P to the power D length of r mod i q minus length of f lower star of r i q f lower star i uh, yeah this is important is uh, of order q t D minus one. Okay, so now multiply the whole thing with the p to the power d, q to the power d. So what you get is a uh, length of uh, r of iq into q to the power d minus uh, so this length, these are all over R, of course, when I don't say anything, it means over R. So this is this length was actually, if I can uh, change it right here, is actually R of IQP, because you have taken one Frobenius, it will get multiplied. So here you have one upon uh, QP D, length of R mod, IQP so one upon Q so if you look at the survey article of Yuneke he said uh, that there are four basic facts about the why the Frobenius works so one of the things he said was summation one upon p n converges that is and this uh, was actually very useful for me uh, several times i have used it and other thing he said the map 
R to F lower star of R essentially is the map you take uh, E of R to F lower star E plus one R. So the way one looks at it, you want to compute some uh, comparison between this or this, or so you better see the at this level and see what uh, amplification it has when you take the more photopenias. So. So here we have C actually, that was the obstruction and this is the amplification we have. So, so we have this one now. So what you do, uh, now Q just denote as Pn actually. Yeah, so this uh, I'll denote uh, a sequence of number Cn uh, to be, uh, maybe I should not talk like that. Uh, it's very confusing. So. Cn, where n belongs to n. I just define Cn uh, p to the power nd equal to length of r mod iq, which is i q is pn actually. Q. So n, I'm not saying n, Cn is a constant. It very much depends on q. I'm right now. I'm saying. So if I look at this way, so this uh, this uh, star one is telling me just that there is a set of numbers, real numbers, of course, uh, in fact, rational number here, Cn plus one is less than or equal to uh, some constant, which is here coming C naught into one upon P and D is something P n. So this is a convergent sequence. So this defines limit if I look at length of R mod I Q upon Q D, Q tends to infinity is same as limit and tends to infinity Cn which converges. So this limit is called EHK of Ri. So rewriting everything from the above equation is just say, telling me that length of Riq is equal to E of HK of uh, this new constant q to the power d plus of order q to the power d minus one. So for a complete local uh, domain, we we have already found the thing, uh, the limit exists assertion. Mm -hmm. This might be a pl no. good place to stop here because I think we're already over time. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, oh, oh. So yeah, no, no, no problem. So, uh, is what is it? It's over the time. Is uh... my understanding is that the lectures are fifty minutes, but I'm not. Ah, okay, okay. Then I I'll stop here. Actually, yeah. So maybe next time I'll take up this uh, result lemma. Yeah. I apologize. I completely forgot. I'm. Oh no, no, no. It was, it was <laughs> a good place to stop anyway. No, so, no, no, uh, no, it's okay. Let's yeah. see if there are any questions for Professor Trivedi. All right, I hear no questions. I don't see any questions in the chat okay. either. So um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Professor Trivedi. Okay, uh, yeah, thanks. So, And uh, we'll meet again uh, next Wednesday uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, on the regular schedule for the, the remaining two lectures. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.